I am the neuroscience research lead at Prince IPI, so I'll be representing the company. Okay, so this is the human brain. The human brain is very complicated. Uh, scientists have been trying to map brain function for a very long time. They have been trying to map language, attention, movement, how we make decisions, and how we love. Uh, are you guys familiar with the MRI? So this is an MRI scanner. When a person gets into it, there are different acquisitions that can be done and that can give us different information about the brain be it structural, functional, what are the tracks in the brain, so all sorts of information. But getting meaningful information out of this is not easy. That's where we come in. So we generate what we call is Google Maps of the brain. So essentially, we take MRI data. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we take MRI data of tracks and locations in the brain to generate a Google Maps of the brain. And this, uh, generating this is not it's not very easy. You have to do like seven, eight, ten steps, and each of the steps has to be advanced enough to cater to different diseases. So yeah, we want to democratize advanced brain mapping because so far this is available only to neuroscience research labs. We want to bring it to everyone, to clinicians, to neuroradiologists, psychiatrists. So yeah, why it's useful, why we want to do it? Because first, first and important, it's used for pre-surgical planning. There are many patients where conventional methods fail because if, if the person is in coma and you ask them to perform a language, they won't be able to do it. There, there would be older people who can't comply with the task. Anything that you do in MRI, it will take like 30 minutes or so, even more than that, to get, a, get an image that is interpretable or get where, where you can see the activations. So we help surgeons to bypass that, where we say that you put the person in the scanner uh, scan them for seven minutes resting state and then we'll give you the same networks that you would otherwise get by stimulating the brain or doing task based for a long time. So this is applicable to people who are not compliant with the conventional mm -hmm. methods. Not only surgery, it's also used for dementia. So we have an AI model where we uh, where we classify healthy participants and see how much they, sorry, where we classify patients and we see how much they deviate from the healthy population. So do the brain patterns indicate a potential dementia or any neurodegenerative disorder for that matter? We are also useful to help uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms better. Uh, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, anxiety, ADHD, all of this affect our resting state networks or how our brain is intrinsically connected. So what we do is we, we see those brain patterns, we understand them and then we answer the psychiatrist. Uh, these are the changes in brain symptoms, the brain patterns that might be causing the symptoms and it's useful because so far uh, many medications fail. Uh, sometimes they don't know what's going on, they don't know how to answer the patient, so we help in rich reporting and nowadays the field is increasingly going towards uh, non-subjective methods, so going beyond DSM to classify all of this and that's why uh, we help this. Uh, uh, we have currently Brainside CI Voxel Box is available to use. Uh, we, we work with uh, 20 hospitals across India. We have assisted in 184 surgeries so far. We have processed 5,000 data sets so far. Um, so yeah, we uh, we do advanced brain mapping and it opens up multi-billion dollar markets because not only neurosurgeons, uh, psychiatrists worldwide, clinicians worldwide, researchers worldwide, they want access to these advanced uh, processing methods that we provide. And then they can make useful decisions, they can answer research questions, they can help them reach can you give me an example of how a neurosurgeon? Yes. So, for example, a person has a tumor and that person is very old and the surgeon wants to map uh, the important areas around the tumor that they need to preserve during surgery. So, traditionally, they would either do a task-based fMRI and they would put the person in the scanner and they'll ask us, so for example, language. So, the tumor is in language region and they want to know that if I resect the tumor, will the areas, important areas around the language be affected? But traditionally, uh, the person would go into scanner, you'd ask them to speak, you'd ask them to listen to something, or 
uh, do some language tasks. But what if the person is not compliant with the task? What if the person is in coma and you need to remove the swelling and injury in the brain? For example, in traumatic brain injury. So instead of that, we say that you put the person in the scanner for seven minutes, resting state, even if it's sedated, it's fine. And then do some structural imaging for five minutes or so. And we use all of that information to generate the same thing. So the same language that's generated from conventional methods is now generated using resting state. The problem is that resting state is only accessible, like it has it has been in research for decades, but it's only accessible to neuroscience research labs, not to clinicians because the processing is more advanced than these traditional methods. Also, like sometimes awake surgeries people do, but it's not possible in everybody. And even people cannot afford it because each uh, electrode that you place on the brain to check whether it's stimulating or not, and it's like guesswork. So you have some anatomical knowledge and you put the electrode, but you can't be sure you're putting it in the right location. But every electrode you use, it's about 50,000 rupees, uh, if I'm correct, and then it, the cost spikes up, especially if you can't find the location. So what we do is we'll, be, we'll give these images, they'll upload it on the neural navigation system that they use during surgery, and then use that to uh, look into precise locations and it will improve the guess. So they don't even need cortical stimulation sometimes if they can't perform awake surgeries. And so just, just to build on what you said, so let's say the surgeon has to, or has to perform an fMRI. Yes. So what would be the process then because you mentioned the process? Yes, yes. So the process would be, uh, so we have... I mean, how does your system come with the picture of an fMRI? Understand. So uh, the person, uh, if, I, if I go to the doctor and I say, I mean, they want to do a tumor surgery for me, what they do is they, the neuroradiologist will do the sequencing for me. So resting state fMRI, they'll do diffusion MRI, and then they'll send the, so either they upload the data, they can use a cloud platform directly, or they can uh, give, upload the data and we can process and give them the results. And we do it in one day. That's how we have a system. But you're not telling the, you're not telling, sorry, uh, where to place the records in your, in this, what you just mentioned. Okay, so there are, sorry, no, there are no electrodes involved at this stage. So it's pre-surgical planning. Uh, the electrodes that I mentioned, I'm saying that if you can't do anything, any MRI imaging, any sort that conventional, then the option is awake surgery, but it's not possible in people, and that's why it gets expensive. But if we do resting state fMRI, we can give the same information. So, okay, okay, I understand, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat, so, so, I, I mentioned electrodes because direct electrical stimulation is used during awake surgeries. But awake surgeries is not possible for everyone. But I need to know, like as a doctor, a person wants to know what are the crucial areas around the tumor. So that imaging they can do before uh, before the surgery. They'll, they'll put the person in scanner resting state seven minutes and we'll, we'll use the intrinsic information that the brain, is have, brain has to generate the same networks. So language and motor network, and it's been in research for a long while. So they used to do resting state for uh, networks such as attention default, which don't, which which necessarily don't have a task that you can see. Like if you stimulate the motor area of the brain, then movement would happen. But similar mapping is not possible for resting state. So for a long time they did resting state, and then they realized they also see these language and motor there also, because we have some intrinsic connections in the brain, and that's like it. It takes some advanced processing to do that. Uh, and that's where we come in. I hope that more people. Thank you so very much. Uh, we should move the next.